What is up everyone, Nick here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make your very own MCP identity disc from Tron Ares. Now, this is a 3D printed replica of the prop from the film, and it runs off of AA batteries and it lights up using Cobb LEDs. In this specific video, we're going to be focusing on the electronics, and in the next video, we're going to talk about how I 3D printed everything, post-processed all the parts, and assembled it. This 3D model was a collaboration between myself and Neon Robotnik, who is a friend of the channel, and we've collaborated on several projects in the past. So if you're interested in getting your very own 3D files for this disc, the link will be in the description. For this specific video though, you will need to 3D print the core of the disc. Now this piece can fit on most 3D printers vertically, like the Bamboo Lab P1S. And regardless of the size of your 3D printer, I recommend you 3D print it vertically anyways, since that will make support removal a lot easier. Now with regards to tools, you will need a soldering iron, some solder, a pair of pliers, and some helping hands to help you solder the electronics. For the supplies, you'll need some super glue, a roll of red 5 volt Cobb LED strips, black and red 28 gauge silicone wire, battery contacts, two flat ones and two spring loaded ones, and a SBDT slide switch to turn the lights on and off. You'll also need to get some M3 threaded inserts to screw the two halves of the disc together, along with some M3 screws. Personally, I went with these 10 millimeter black hex button screws to screw the top half of the disc, and some six millimeter ones for screwing the core down inside the disc. And as per usual, all the links to the supplies will be in the description of this video. Once you have all of your supplies ready to go, we can start working on the electronics. Specifically, we'll start with the circuitry for the batteries. So let's start by grabbing our inner core along with the battery contacts we're going to be using for this project. We're going to start by using the springy one right here and soldering a piece of black wire directly to it. Now don't cut it to size because we're going to be doing that once it's installed. Make sure you apply a bunch of solder, that way the wire is nicely soldered to the contact. And then we can solder up our red wire to the flat contact which is going to be for the positive side of the battery. Grabbing our springy contact with the black wire for the ground side of the battery, we can press it down right here on the inner core. And you're gonna wanna make sure that the wire can reach all the way to the center of the core where all the other electronics will be. Now we can grab the red side and make sure that the wire is properly routed all the way to the other side for the other battery contacts and trim it down. Next up, we can solder that red wire to another springy contact, which is going to be for the negative side of this set of batteries. Next up, we're gonna grab the last of our flat contacts and solder that to a red wire. Now that the battery contacts are cooled down, we can start pressing them into place, grabbing the springy one and placing it right here on our inner core and the flat one on this side of the inner core. Once again, route the red wire all the way around, making sure it's long enough to reach the center and then some because it's going to be feeding through the hole of the kill switch. And now we can glue down the wire on this side of the core, that way it doesn't get in the way. And we can finally begin soldering up our lights. We're gonna grab the Cobb LED, and we're gonna strip back this cover, that way we can desolder the USB connector since we won't be needing it. And now we can grab our red and black wires and solder them to the negative pin and the positive pin of the Cobb LED. Make sure that they're about three inches long, that way you have plenty of leeway when cutting them down later. And we can begin gluing it to the inside of the disc. We're gonna start with the inner ring and we're gonna work our way in. And once you've reached the end, you can just overlap the cob LED with the other since there isn't a lack of space on this side of the disc. Now we're gonna take the ground wire coming off our inner ring and we're gonna trim it down slightly to jump to the middle ring. And we can grab another piece of wire to make the jump from the middle ring to the outer ring. So grab both pieces of wire and strip them back. And we're gonna twist them together to form a joint. And once that's done, we can apply a bit of solder. 
Now we can start soldering the lights for the middle ring. So we can grab a piece of red wire and solder it down to the positive contact on the cob LED. Now we can grab the ground wires we just joined together and solder it to the ground pin on the cob LED as well. And at this point, we're ready to start gluing the cob LEDs inside the disc for the middle ring. I highly suggest you use super glue for this because it does tend to get unglued. And unlike the inner and outer blades, they don't have anything to press up against to keep it from getting unglued. Now we're gonna grab the black wire coming off our ground contact and cross it with the wire coming off the middle ring. So once these two wires are twisted together and soldered, we can solder this wire to the cob LEDs for the outer blade. So we're just going to apply a bit of solder to those contacts and we can begin soldering the wires directly to the cob LEDs. So we're gonna start with our ground wire, soldering that to the ground contact, and a red piece of wire, which again is going to feed through the hole for the kill switch, so make sure it's a few inches long. And once those wires are soldered down, we can start gluing our cob LEDs to the outside of the core for the outer blade. And once we have the correct length, we can just cut our cob LED and glue it down the rest of the way. Again, no issue if there's some overlap here since there's room inside the disc. Now we're gonna grab the red wire coming off our positive battery contact and feed it through the hole for the kill switch. So this wire needs to go to the outer pin of the kill switch, either the left or the right. And in the middle, we're going to be soldering the rest of the wires. So let's apply a little bit of solder to the middle pin and the right pin. And we can solder our positive lead to the right side pin. Now we need to grab the other three wires for our three lights and feed them through the hole. And once they're fed through, we can cut them to length. That way all three are the same length. Now let's begin by stripping them down and twisting them all together. So we'll take a pair and twist them together and then take the third one and twist it to the other pair. And once all three wires are twisted together, we can apply a bit of solder to reinforce this joint. And solder those three wires to the middle pin on the kill switch. Now all we have left to do is to feed the kill switch in this hole by pressing it in. Now all we have left to do is to just insert our battery. So just be mindful of the negative and positive contacts. We want to have the negative at the spring point right here and the negative of this battery against the positive here. And same thing here, spring contact here is for the negative and the negative of this battery goes to the positive here. That way it all fits just like that. Now with the flip of a switch, we have light. Now you probably can tell I added some extra lights here for the corners of the recognizer details. You can add these yourself. It's just a question of adding extra wires from the negative and the positive coming off of the switch to your light and then splicing extra wires to go to the next light and then to the next light and so on and so forth. Now the reason I didn't include it in this video is because it is extremely tedious for the amount of work you have to put into it. It literally took me longer to do these 12 little lights than it did for me to do the entirety of the electronics for this disc. And on top of that, you need to buy an extra roll of cob LEDs to be able to complete it because with just one roll, you won't have enough to do all 12 of these and the three lights on the disc. But with that said, it still looks very, very good. And that pretty much covers all the electronics for your very own MCP identity disc from Tron Ares. If you have any questions about the electronics process, please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss part two where I cover how I 3D printed all the parts for the disc, how I post-processed them using acetone smoothing, and how I did the final assembly for the identity disc. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you all in the next one.